Bob. Beginning a part-time website design work um, with his son in 1999, Bob Park has created websites for a number of groups engaging uh, progressive social action, such as the Raging Grannies of Madison. He got involved. I hear a yay for the Raging Grannies. Yay! Uh, he got involved with Low Power FM, LP FM radio after retiring from a pollution control engineer position with the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources in 2006. When WIDE LP needed its first home for transmitters, he offered his garage in southwest Madison. And he's done many more interesting things, and I will let him tell you about that. Okay. Uh, our two speakers here reminds me of, of graduate school in the 1960s when I shared my office with a Goldwater Republican. <laughs> <laughs> and the more we discussed, the more liberal my views got. <laughs> <laughs> yep. I'm curious how many of you have actually listened to a low power radio station and, and known that you were doing so? What's the definition of a low power radio station? My, my wife. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my, small radius. <laughs> Less than 5,000 watts. More than uh, I'm getting into that. Uh, low power station. Uh, the FCC requires you to broadcast at no more than 100 watts effective radiated power. This came from pirate radio years ago, and they, they wanted to get rid of the pirate radio station, so they actually created a license that, that could be used by people who were doing low-power broadcasting. Um, the uh, antenna height, you can have uh, uh, 98 feet above the ground if, um, and broadcast at 100 watts, unless the ground happens to be above um, average terrain, and then if you if you're you have to cut back on your power. For example, our station uh, when it relocated uh, put its antenna up 73 feet, but that was more than the height above average terrain that the FCC would allow at 100 watts, and they told us we had to cut back to 40 watts. So that's how low power our station is: 40 watts effective radiated, radiated power. Um, and another big difference, we're non-commercial. We cannot have any commercials at all, but the license is, is free. Um, one station per owner, you can't have a, a group, an organization owning more than one station. Um, and it has to be an organization, not an individual. Um, the FCC had uh, two different windows of opportunity for applications, first in 2000 to 2001. And that was <coughs> limited by opposition from full power stations and opposition from the National Association of Broadcasters, including public radio, which said, we're afraid they're going to interfere with our broadcast if you put these stations in too close to us. So they were very limited. Uh, one station, uh, a Christian station, was approved for Madison, and the FCC said, we've got one more frequency you can have in, in, in central Madison. And there were seven applicants. Well, what happened was that these applicants ended up deciding they would share the airtime rather than competing for the license. So two coalitions were formed, one Christian and one secular nonprofits. And uh, we finally, uh, the first application went in in 2001. It was finally granted in 2004. And the station broadcast um, as a joint operation between these two partners, each having half the airtime. Um, <coughs> until uh, <coughs> July of uh, 2015. At that, by that time, the uh, congressional study of the allegations about interference from Mopar stations had gone through and d demonstrated that that was a very overblown consideration. So the uh, Local Community Radio Act was finally passed and signed by President Obama in January of 2011. And that led to the second window of application opportunity from the FCC for low power stations in 2013. And our uh, Christian partner got their own license. They went on the air. We helped them get their station going in uh, August of 2015. And then we uh, got approval to relocate the station to a better location. Another garage in Madison. <laughs> <laughs> but it was more centrally located and, and we could have a antenna twice as high. Um, so um, 
the second round of the uh, applications window led to more than doubling in the number of low power stations in the country. There are now more than 1,500 low power stations broadcasting at 100 watts or less. Now, our particular station, uh, WIDELP, the stations are required to say LP at the end of their call letters to indicate their low power. Um, we, as I said, got on the air and uh, well, we, we first got on the air in 2007 for a test broadcast for two weeks with rented equipment, then uh, finally got on the air for <coughs> seven in September 2008, but only at 50 watts because we were limited by the borrowed or used equipment we had, and finally we bought a refurbished transmitter that allowed us to broadcast at 100 watts starting in April 2009. So. Uh, soon after that, I became the volunteer program director. Uh, I'm not an on-the-air person. We don't actually have any disc jockeys at, at present. It's a, a station with no studio and no live broadcasting. Everything is controlled by the computer, which is in, as I said, in a garage uh, in West Madison. <clears throat> um, we continue using our startup grant for all our expenses. Uh, the, the setup grant that our half of the station got initially, and that goes mainly for royalty fees, electricity, and internet connection. Um, had to buy some more equipment. Uh, we have are required to be part of the emergency broadcast system, and we bought a couple of radios to uh, provide that capability. Um, we're keeping our costs down by having no paid staff, 100% volunteer operated. Uh, I program the community, the broadcast computer from home by the inter through the internet. Uh, and our grant money will be running out about the middle of this year. We're planning to uh, start a fund drive and, and uh, we're glad to accept donations from anyone who wants to see us continue to put progressive, progressive voices on the air. That's our slogan as of the beginning of this year. My wife is a treasure. Hold up your hand. Yeah, I'll take it. Throw your money at her. <laughs> <laughs> Some of the progressive voices who, uh, who we have aired include Matt Rothschild, John Nichols, Bob McChesney, Lisa Graves, Catherine Kramer, Mike McKay, John Stockwell, Luke Connor, Chuck Lavalla, Ed Tyree, Jim Hightower, and Greg Fallis. And uh, progressive political figures who've been on our airways include Bernie Sanders, Russ Feingold, Tammy Baldwin, Mark Pocan, Keith Ellison, Chris Taylor, and Teresa Berceau, uh, Madison area local representatives. Pro progressive programs we air include Democracy Now!, Counterspin, Talk Nation Radio, Alternative Radio, and Battleground Wisconsin from Milwaukee, and uh, Bonatus News from England. Uh, podcasts we previously aired, which are unfortunately no longer being produced, were Moyers and Company and Fighting Bob Radio. Uh, internet resources uh, are important, especially when you have a low power station that only reaches a limited audience. Um, the internet pl plays several important roles for uh, low power stations. Uh, I broadcast with permission podcasts from Australia, Canada and England, as well as from around the U.S. Um, the, uh, most, the, most such stations usually have a website. The website also provides uh, a good place for contact uh, information, phone number and email, uh, a contact form, uh, a place to add your name to a mailing list, such as a radio council or friends of the station. And uh, you have the key, one possible way you can use your website is to have a now playing uh, scroll which shows what's going on over the air based on the, the metadata in your the mp3 files that you're, you're playing. Uh, our station also, website also is provides archival links to talk shows going back to the first year uh, that we were on the air in 2008. Um, 9 a.m. Uh, every weekday mornings when we broadcast Democracy Now! and that becomes available from Democracy Now! at 8.30 Central Time and we uh, have the 
capability of an automatic download, something called RSS, that goes directly to the broadcast computer and then gets broadcast uh, as soon as the 9 o'clock hour rolls around. Uh, many LPFM stations, low power, uh, LPFM is, is the abbreviation, and if you do a search on the web for LPFM, you'll find a lot about low power radios. Uh, many such stations do live streaming on the internet, uh, including music, if they can afford the additional fees. There are additional fees involved with streaming uh, music, which are not included if you are paying the flat rate that you get to pay to three different organizations for broadcasting all the music that you want to use. I use Twitter for daily tweets to give the topics on uh, the following day's talk shows. So far, uh, more than 6,500 tweets since 2009. Many stations have Facebook pages, which they provide station information and announcements of coming public events, uh, fundraisers, for example, that they put on. Uh, some use Instagram for station photographs. Uh, such links for the five community LPFM stations in the greater Madison area are provided on the station page of our joint website. Uh, and uh, this is the first newsletter we came out with in February, and uh, the last page has that website link, lpfm.madisonwi.us. And if you go to that website, you'll find links to contact information on all the those five stations and uh, um, links to their Facebook pages and so on. Finally, uh, meetings that we've had that uh, give some idea of the kind of networking that's possible. Several of us from three of the LP FM stations attended the Grassroots Radio Conference in Ames, Iowa in 2014 and followed uh, with a local mini-summit in Madison the following month. These are annual events that are hosted by local radio stations, some of them low-power stations, in various parts of the country. Um, in 2015 in Milwaukee and in 2016 in Madison, the Wisconsin Community Media Organization, which deals mostly with TV, provided pre-conference sessions for LPFM radio folks. And the five community radio stations in the greater Madison area let, met, let, met last November to share progress reports, and that's when we decided to start publishing this newsletter every so often, hopefully quarterly. Um, and uh, it's, a, it's available online uh, on the, the website. Our local group also plans to meet uh, next in the city of Monona, as it happens, on April 10th. I don't know oh. if that's going to compete, but <laughs> our meeting's at 11 a.m., in City Hall. No. My turn. Well, thank you, Bob. Got it ready? <laughs>